Hi, Sapna, can you hear me? Check your video also once. I... Yeah, it's trying to come on, yeah. Do that, but let me see. Is it? No, it's not there still. I'll just check. <clears throat> You've been accessing Zoom, no? Uh, yes, but not quite often because we are on the Teams most of the time. Yeah, yeah. MS Teams. Yes. But one second. Huh? Just, yeah, one. just You can mute yourself. Yeah. I was calling you to ask him to come. Good afternoon, everyone. Just give us a little bit of time and we'll start. We'll just wait for everyone to connect. Yes, yeah, so it's not so good. Yeah. Good afternoon. Sasmita, I think your video shows as on, but we're not able to see you. Bonjour, Kami. Bonjour, Yannick. Bonjour. Bonjour. Enchanté. Enchanté, oui. Vous parlez un excellent français. Pardon? Vous parlez un excellent français. <laughs> On essaie parce que nous sommes en contact avec nos clients, donc c'est nécessaire. Mm -hmm. Tu es en mute, Yannick. Oui. Tu es en mute. Voilà. voilà. <rire> Salut. Salut. Tu vas bien Ça va et toi bon, tu, es, tu es allé au bureau alors Non, non, je ne suis pas au bureau là. Je suis dans ah, un bureau bon. virtuel à la maison. Ah, ok. Ah, excellent. Ah ouais, super. Non, non, je reste, je reste à l'isolement, là, au moins deux jours, le temps d'être sûr de ne pas l'avoir attrapé moi-même. D'accord. Parce que le, le background donne le sentiment que tu es au carme. Mmh. Oui, ouais, il, est, il est très bien fait. Bonjour, Camille. Bonjour. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon.
Hello, Sapna? No, she can't hear me. She can't hear me. I have unmuted here, but... Sasmita, it's perfect. We can uh, hear you and we can see you. Okay, perfect. Huh? Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, thanks. There was so some think, technical hitch. Yeah, just a little bit, I know. Maybe it's, uh, you know, sometimes if you've not used it for a while, it uh, kind of... Yeah, we actually do not use Zoom. I mean, as per uh, our it, company. We, no, we too yeah. don't really, but for this mm. session, I think... Uh, we said we'll use it because some companies actually do have a firewall issue also. So yes, yes for us, yeah. it's big time. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, good afternoon, Yannick. Kami. Yeah, we have Kami and Yannick. I think uh, has Mohammed uh, uh, joined? No, uh, yeah, no, yeah. I yes, think I can see him sure? besides Yannick. Oh, yes. Mohammed is right there. Hello. Hi. <laughs> So good afternoon, good afternoon everyone, just give us a little while. We have about 20 people who've joined until now. We'll just wait a few more minutes so that we have the registered participants uh, logged in and we'll start. Just give us a few minutes. Okay, perfect. Thank okay. you. Hello, Sasmita. Hello. Hi, Yanni. Yeah. Uh, now, just wondering, is it uh, still hot in, uh, in India? Because we've seen uh, that the last month was... Uh... Yes, it is. It is very, very hot. I mean, we are, uh, we are in between sometimes 44, 45 to sometimes 48, 49. Wow. And uh, today it seems to be better. Just today morning, we had a slight drizzle, but then okay. um, it's humid, then the hot and the humid together. So it is uh, not a very pleasant weather now yeah. in, in Delhi, in Delhi specifically. So no, in India, in, yeah. sorry. No, no, it's okay. 
in India specifically, I mean, it has, you know, because of the diversity of the geographies, it has various different climates in various other locations. So the North is specifically facing a lot of heat waves these days. And this is not the case with the rest of India, of course. East is also like that, but then West is moderate and South is okay. Okay. Uh, because we, we, we are starting to face here in, uh, in France, yeah. in, uh, in those days, also quite a big heat uh, wave, which is a bit worrying because it's only June. Um, <laughs> I guess it's, uh, it's plus 40 now in France. Yeah, it's, it's plus 40, yeah. And yes. uh, even announcing even worse for, the, for this weekend. Yeah, because we, when we talk to France sometimes, uh, last year, uh, my boss there, he came forward telling that, you know, for the first time they wanted to, um, they wanted to have, they, they never had fans or, you know, or even um, air conditioners uh, earlier. So they said mm. that we have started to buy them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. So, the, but the issue with air conditioning is, uh, in a certain way, where you uh, you make uh, the phenomenon even worse. I mean, not, not on the scale of, of one house, one company, but uh, yes. on, on, on a global scale. That's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so global hi. warming. Yeah. Okay, great. Hi. So, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Should we start? I think people will continue to join in. But let's uh, stick to the timing also in view of uh, people who have another schedule lined up. So yes. I'm just going to, yes, just give me a minute. Yes. So yes, a very good afternoon to everybody. And thank you so much for joining us today for this webinar. I am Sapna. I'm heading HR and Recruitment Services at IFKI. And today, IFKI, in association with ESC Clermont, brings to you a panel discussion on the resilient supply chain. For, for, so for those of you who are not familiar with ESC Clermont, I'm going to share a few lines of introduction. So ESC Clermont Business School is a leading French Grand École of Management committed to accompanying change in the evolving world. ESC Clermont Business School is one of the 20 French Grand École of Management with three international accreditations. In France, ESC Clermont School is a school recognized by the Ministry of Higher Education, Research and Innovation since its foundation in 1919. So coming back to our topic for discussion, we are all aware that the of the impact of the pandemic on supply chain management. However, today we're going to go a little deeper and try to understand the reasons for the same and how companies must adapt their supply chain strategies to face these new challenges. And then we're also going to touch upon how redesigning supply chains can contribute to a sustainable to sustain sustainable development and the opportunities that are likely to open up as a result of this, not only for you know young graduates, but also for supply chain specialists. So I'm going to now start with the introduction with our moderator for today's session. And uh, we have with us Mohammed Al Zaidi. He's recruitment manager, international students at ESC Clermont. And Mohammed has been a member of the International Relations Office of ESC Clermont Business School for several years. He manages promotion of the business school on the international level while piloting admissions and student counseling. So over to you, Mohammed, and uh, we really look forward to a very interesting session. Thank you. Thank you very much for this introduction, Sapna, and we are extremely happy to be here with you today for this webinar. And we would like to really thank you for all the organization efforts that have been put into place. So I'm very happy to be here uh, today with my guests, so Yannick, uh, as well as Kami and Sasmita. So thank you so much for your presence. So I will ask you to firstly introduce yourselves so that the public can, could get to know you better. So perhaps we can start by uh, Yannick. Okay, so uh, hello everybody. So my name is uh, Yannick. So I'm a French uh, native from uh, the Clermont-Ferrand uh, area. And uh, I also am an alumni uh, of this school because quite a long time ago, as you can see with my white hair, uh, <laughs> I used to be uh, graduated from, uh, from the school. And thanks to this school, I got uh, the possibility quite, to, to go abroad, uh, France, and have an international uh, development in my, in my career. 
Uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, uh, I used to work in the uh, Middle East, in uh, South America, and in uh, Asia, mainly in, uh, in China. Uh, I used to work in the retail industry for a big company, probably where you know about Carrefour. So it's the competition of Carrefour is called the uh, casino, quite involved in the South America business and the Europe business. And I used to be in charge of uh, the international uh, purchase and the supply chain for this company during more than uh, 10 years. Basically, uh, uh, we were doing interna international collection uh, of products that we were sourcing in Asia and that we were introducing to our partners uh, all over the world. Then I went to a medium-sized company in the garden equipments uh, for 10 years in Asia, in uh, Shanghai and in, uh, in Hong Kong, also on uh, purchase supply chain and business development subjects. And then lately, I came back to my roots <laughs> three years ago. I'm back in Clermont and uh, I have my own business that I've been developing like an uh, entrepreneur. And uh, then I'm involved in the, in the ESC uh, Clermont as a director of the program of uh, purchase logistics, we can say, because I think logistics is an important word, uh, especially in India. Purchase log logistics, sorry, and the uh, supply chain management. I'm very glad to be with you here and uh, thanks for participating. Thank you very much for this introduction, Yannick. And yeah, it's, uh, it's such a great, uh, let's say, uh, background, very international uh, in multiple countries. So uh, I will also ask Kami and uh, Sasmita to introduce themselves so that uh, our participants could also get to know more about your backgrounds. Okay, so I may start. Uh, so I am Camille de Marquigny, uh, French as well. I have no gray hairs, but uh, because I don't have hairs any, anymore, probably because I spent uh, 17 years in uh, supply chain responsibilities within Michelin. And prior to that, 10 years in research and development, two years in manufacturing. Uh, I did all my careers uh, within Michelin. Uh, and uh, I have been working so in supply chain 17 years, a lot in operations or in project, uh, transformation projects. Uh, uh, I am very happy to be connected today with some uh, Indian people because a few years ago, I was a supply chain and logistic directors for the Africa, Middle East and India part of the world. And uh, I remember uh, how, uh, how India is a fantastic country. My, uh, my current responsibility, so I am a, a VP supply chain in charge of supply chain innovation and supply chain transformation. We have about uh, 450 uh, supply chain engineers within the Michelin group, uh, either at the corporate level in Clermont or in the different regions of the world. And all those uh, supply chain experts are working every day to optimize the supply chain processes and to transform the supply chain processes. And one of the transformation axes is the resilience supply chain that we are going to, to discuss today. Thank you very much, Camille. So well to end with. So Sasmita, if you could also tell us about yourself and your current position. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Yannick and Camille. I mean, it, it's great knowing you and about you. So good afternoon uh, to India and uh, good morning to Fran France, French nationals and the uh, rest of the people in this, uh, in this group. So uh, my name is Sasmita Mohanty. I am Indian uh, by the name and by looks also you can see purely Indian. Uh, India is a versatile country, a big in geography. So if I say I am Indian, from which part of India also matters. So I am from the eastern part of India and settled in the northern part of India. So and um, in my studies, uh, I did I did most of my studies uh, from a German convent. And after I took up my management, my first my master's in sociology. And after I took a management degree in marketing and sales and human resources and a second management again in business development. So I have two business development masters. 
and after I took up a job, I was a government employee for about some years. And then I worked with under the Ministry of HRD for the uh, National Dairy Development Board. Uh, some years later, I quit and I uh, joined uh, Excel, now called DHL. Uh, so I'm in that through and through in HR. After DHL, I think I took another stint with another uh, trade. Uh, it's a different business altogether. I switched over to the IT company called Sapient Corporation. Worked there for some time, all through based in India. From Sapient, I switched over to uh, Bolore. Bolore at that time was known as uh, SDV because when it had uh, SDV, I mean, how you call. So it it had come into India and as, as a French company coming into India, we had a we had a JV partnership with Airlink uh, with an Indian uh, multinational. However, uh, over the year, over two years, after two years, we took it over as fully uh, with a hundred percent stake and we became SDV international to, all together here. Growing up from India, we uh, we took up positions uh, positions from um, from Sri Lankan entities and from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, and from Middle East and uh, Middle East. So that's how we became a bigger entity called the Middle East and South Asia. So in Bolore. Uh, now, Bolore, uh, which has been here since 2016, when the it's it's a familial group. It it belongs to the family of the Bolores. So Bolore is the family name. Uh, you would be aware. Um, it's a French surname. So as uh, Venso Bolore, who is the head of the who is who is the head of the group currently, it is a group. It is not a standalone company. So this is uh, this company is headquartered in Puto in Paris, and uh, it has various divisions other than the logistics and supply uh, supply chain, which is called the transport and logistic division. It has. It is um, also into uh, transportation. It is into manufacturing of cars and buses. That is automobiles. It's into mineral oil, uh, battery energy, supercapacitors, media, uh, print and audiovisual, plantation, uh, Steve during ports, uh, railways, energy. So it's into various kinds of activities. However, talking about supply chain management, that is the transport and logistic division. It is having a huge, uh, huge share out of the whole company's, uh, I mean, the whole group's uh, investment. The whole group is divided into several holdings. One of the holding is called the BTL or the Bolore Transport and Logistics. And under this holding, we have four divisions. And one of the division is uh, transport is freight forwarding for sure, which is called the supply chain logistics and supply chain management. The others are railway, energy, and uh, ports. So. We are present in about 106 countries with a, a huge staff strength of about 35,000 uh, across the globe. Currently, the BTL holding is being headed by the, the, the son of Venso Bolore, the serial Bolore. Uh, so this is about the company. And for me, I am heading the human resources department um, for South Asia. And along with the human resources, um, I also take care of ethics and compliance and QHSC and CSR. So these are uh, the four portfolios that I have. My ma major being, of course, human resources. So I'm designated as the CHRO of South Asia for Bolore, uh, South Asian entity. So I have been in this company for 16 years, eight months. So precisely around 17 years. So still feel to be very young in the company because when we are in the headquarters, people come and say that they had 25 years, 32 years. <laughs> So anyways, but then this is the consistency of the company, great company to work with, and uh, uh, it's considered as a people's company. So this is all about uh, me. I will be speaking more about Bolore uh, in the due course and what we have, what we do. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mohamed. Thank you so much for uh, the introduction. So uh, it's such a great pleasure to have leaders and experts of the field. Also, we have, as we can see, we uh, we have uh, insights being shared by um, people who have a lot of extensive experience in the field and coming from big groups as Michelin in France and Bolore Logistics in India. So that's a big advantage also of this webinar is to give you insights from both perspectives. So from the French, way of doing business and from the Indian way of doing business 
as well. So uh, let us start with uh, the first main focus area of today's discussion. Uh, as we have indicated, we will divide the structure of the talk into three main topics. So as for the first topic, it's gonna be focusing on the challenges that supply chain management is facing in recent times. The second point is going to be, um, the second topic is going to be sustainable development and how supply chain uh, processes and procedures have to adapt accordingly. And finally, we are going to end the discussion with the demand in the labor market for uh, students and graduates that are prepared for those challenges and that are able to bring positive change in the supply chain management process. So let us start with the first uh, main focus area of today's discussion. So as we all know, so there has been uh, for a couple of years now, we are jumping from one crisis to another. There was uh, the financial crisis a couple of years ago, then the COVID, then uh, the geopolitical uh, issues that we are facing right now. So of course, all of those crises, they are affecting our daily lives and in particular, the flow of goods and services, so supply chain management. So my first question uh, to the guests over here, so um, how, what is the effect of those uh, global challenges on supply chain management? How do those challenges and crises impact supply chain management, especially that we see that is becoming more and more frequent. So I'll start uh, by Kami. So if you could provide us with an idea on the impact of uh, those challenges. Okay, first, uh, I think it's uh, important to, to understand what are the root causes of uh, the recent uh, crises. Uh, what are the root causes of the impact on supply chain of the recent crisis that uh, Mohamed, you have mentioned. It is really important to realize that we are now, today, in a global economy. Uh, and in the last uh, 30 to 40 years, uh, all, the, all the industry have been, uh, has been driven by cost efficiency uh, purpose. And to do that, uh, we have now in the planet big factories producing uh, in very long initial campaigns uh, uh, a small number of references. I'm, I, I will try to be very, very, uh, very uh, pragmatic about that to explain that. Let's take the example of Michelin. In our commercial catalog, we have about uh, 5,000 references. We have in the world, on the planet, 67 uh, manufacturing plants. But no one of the plants is able to produce the full uh, catalog range. A typical Michelin plant will produce 100, maximum 200 of products. Why? Because they are dedicated to a product of family in order to be more efficient and to save uh, manufacturing cost. So when we want to propose our 5,000 references a catalog in a country, let's take the example of India, we need to ship from everywhere in the world product to India. And we have in India only one factory dedicated to truck tires, to uh, truck tires, yes, with about uh, 50, References. So you imagine that uh, the huge majority of our product is coming from somewhere else. And this is the same situation in all countries. So when you have a plant which is closed in China because of COVID, a part of our catalog is not available for anybody. When uh, one week after you have a plant or semi-finished plant closing in Canada because of COVID, a part of the catalog is, no, is not available for any customer, and so on, and so on. On the top of that, and it is as well very important to, to understand, uh, for Michelin, and again, for all the companies, our supply chain do not start within Michelin. Our supply chain starts within the suppliers of Michelin. And the suppliers of Michelin, for raw materials, for semi-finish, 
they are exactly the same situation. So when the when the planet has a unique factory, very globalized, is running accordingly uh, to what it has been designed for, everything is fine for everybody. But when you have a crisis in, a, in somewhere, everybody is impacted. And, and all that has been built for uh, industrial cost optimization purpose. Probably we went too far in this direction. And this is uh, the first learning on this crisis phase. We don't know which will be the, when will be the next one. We know that we will have the next one. And really, we see that the supply chain is too fragile. And this is why it is so important to build the resilient supply chain. Okay. okay so yeah, we, can see, we can see how big the impact could be uh, due because due to the globalization, the internationalization of trade, no single country is able to survive, you know, on its own. So uh, all the countries they are obliged to involve in importation, exportation, in the movement and flow of goods, services, and raw materials. So of course they need to be prepared because also today we are not living the last crisis. I'm sure a couple of years later we are going to have to deal with something that could be perhaps be surprising uh, for us. Uh, so that's okay. That's the insight uh, when it came to uh, Michelin. How about uh, in Bologna logistics, Sasmita? So can you provide us with an insight on how the impact of uh, the different uh, recent prices were when it comes to uh, your company? Well, of course, um, Bolloré as a whole and supply chain, uh, the, the business of supply chain, I would like to highlight on that as well, because uh, this pandemic hit, uh, which has posed uh, significant challenges for the supply chain globally. Uh, some there, there were uh, national lockdowns, slow, even temporary stop of the flow of raw materials and finished goods, like what you said. Like, you know, the countries are interdependent on each other. And when they're, the countries are interdependent, the supply chain management functions. So this is how Bolloré and other supply chain management uh, business is also affected. The uh, It has... The pandemic has not necessarily uh, created any new challenges for the supply chain, however, in some areas it brought to light previously unseen vulnerabilities and of course many organizations have suffered staff shortages and losses due to COVID-19, but overall it has accelerated and magnified problems that even already existed in the supply chain. So the logistics and SCM companies uh, strategized to become more resilient, uh, collaborative, and networked with the customers, suppliers, and other stakeholders. To do that, they needed to increase investment in supply chain technologies like AI and other robotic process automation and retaining uh, work. So uh, in this way, the pandemic has substantial negative effects on the supply chain. Uh, certain sectors fared worse than others, for sure, but some life sciences companies reported few effects, like COVID-19 pandemic was a global disruption across trade, you know, like finance, health, education system, business, etc. Uh, in, uh, in, the, in the past 100 years, it was only perhaps... Um, perhaps 2% of the companies that reported that they were fully prepared for the pandemic hit, but I don't know how much. Rest had to face the serious disruption and uh, negative effect on the business. Now, often in such envi economic environments, uh, companies slow down their technology investment to a trickle. Uh, but uh, because of this pandemic, some did not halt uh, on the technology investments, and this speaks to the uh, to the uh, to, to the value of a digital supply chain in uh, in helping enterprise navigate navigate disruptive forces and respond faster to the volatile supply and demand. Bolore also did the same. So we invested a lot into the technological development, like TMS One project, where we launched the cargo vice. Uh, this is a typical project that we have done. Uh, we have launched. Uh, very efficiently. Now, there's a project to globalize the operations and the procurement strategies. So, like for example, every entity uh, does their own procurement and try to maintain some margin to meet the gross margin or OR for the budgets allocated to them. Now, with the TMS one allocated to, uh, with the TMS one uh, project launched or the cargo wise project launched, more and more visibility um, has been given globally, and the global uh, globalized work process and organization structure has started to prevail. We haven't yet completed this process, but then we are going into it. So we are also targeting. Um, 
uh, about four or five years to to have this more uh, thinking that this is not the end of the uh, of the of the uh, hit that we have ever had on, on the either it is pandemic or any other or any other uh, hits you know be it global slowdown be it economic slowdown uh, anything so there were some of the clear some uh, very clear winners by industries during this pandemic um, and some sectors were hit particularly hard. However, uh, among uh, there were certain surveys which was conducted amongst the automotive industry. It was a complete hit. Why I'm talking about other trades also because they are all related with the supply chain management. Because unless these companies were hit, we would have not come down. So the automotives in uh, automotive industry uh, they came uh, they had a very negative effect. They had a uh, they had a total disrupted workforce. Many employers uh, also um, also asked their workers workforce to work from home, especially in factory settings. Had to adopt into new requirements for physical spacing, uh, contract uh, contact tracing, and more personal protective equipments. So industrial pro products and high tech manufacturing companies are also investing overwhelmingly in in technology to reduce employee exposure. So. These are few examples uh, of changes, you know, affecting uh, supply chain across the various sectors. Because supply chain is what I mean. We are not uh, we are not a product in ourselves, and we depend on products that exists across the world. So we are the middlemen between the end manufacturer and the distributor. So we we are a connecting chain. So if there is a disruption in the market with with the end chains then then we will definitely suffer and now um, because of the technique uh, we have realized that because of the technology uh, we are we have taken a setback but then uh, with given time i think we are taking a rise and we are investing highly into that uh, okay so, so it this, means this, that yeah, yeah. So it means that uh, one of the biggest, let's say, um, solutions, one of the biggest, uh, let's say, points that we need to focus on that companies need to invest in its technology in order to anticipate and to be able, you know, to deal with such crises in advance and not wait for the consequences to happen. And Absolutely. Uh, for you, for you, Yannick, moving on from an industrial point of view to the retail point of view. Uh, how was the impact like and what are the possible strategies to deal with such uh, challenges? Yeah, so um, I'll try to be, to, be, to be short and go on a precise um, example. But basically, on the retail industry, we have the same phenomenon as it was uh, described by uh, Camille and by uh, Sasmita in their uh, respective uh, fields with the global world. What I was mentioning when I used to work in, the, in, uh, in casino, we are doing international production, uh, production of products that we were sourcing in Asia and bas basically China at this time was 90% of the, the, the production of uh, consumer goods, what we can say. And we were selling everywhere in the world, in Colombia, in uh, <clears throat> in, in Africa, on other continents or, or, or countries. So uh, the, the crisis has affected in the, in the same way as this, uh, this industry. And I will give you an example with a business that I'm running right now. We have a little business, but we are not an international company <laughs> like, <yet>. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Michelin or, or Bolloré Logistics. But basically, we are, we are doing uh, some uh, greenhouse uh, greenhouses uh, business but to uh, to grow uh, vegetables uh, and and fruits and uh, one part of our business uh, we uh, our business model is to produce in France because uh, in a certain way we anticipated that we may have uh, trouble in the in the future uh, to get goods from other part of the world but another part uh, is uh, directly imported uh, today from China still, and we have 50% of our business in import and 50% in our business that we are doing on the local production. So with the crisis, we had in fact two big impacts. One was on the logistics, uh, like Sasmita mentioned, because we got the price of containers that have been gone from, let's say 1,500 US dollar to 15,000 US dollar, so time 10, which is a, a big impact on our cost uh, structure. And obviously on the price or so to pay for the customer. And the second part was on the price on the raw material because the price of the raw material has raised a lot. Our weather is a 
linked with speculation, whether it's linked with a real scarce of material. In this one, I'm not, not able to comment about this, but basically well, the, the impact, the impact, uh, the, the effect is that we, we had a very strong rise in, uh, in the cost of our raw materials, which means at the end that we have some issues in, uh, in selling, let's say, uh, our products with the model uh, that, uh, that we had uh, on, on place, and with an inflation, I think uh, it's probably quite the same in all the countries of the world today. But in France, we we are, we are facing a strong inflation linked also with, uh, let's say, the the supply chain organization uh, that we have uh, that we have uh, today. And for this, we try on our side to develop as much as possible the local, let's say, uh, manufacturing which I think is the introduction of the second topic. Yeah, so Reliance, let's say that um, we, ha we have a tendency now to rely on local production and not mainly focus on uh, importation from abroad, abroad. So that could be a possible uh, approach by governments and by different companies to perhaps not uh, rely mainly on uh, international trade, but also have relevant alternatives because we have seen it with yeah different goods that might not be uh, available in the market, such as medicine, such as oil. We've had this big trouble with oil just recently. The supermarkets, you don't find it on the shelves. So perhaps it's more wise and more um, um, makes more sense now to rely on local production. Yes. Okay, so that's the first, uh, that was the first topic that we wanted to discuss. So the main, the main impact, we have seen inflation, we have seen the slowdown of the entire supply. Today's discussion, it's related to the environmental uh, pressure, the environmental policies. Um, the companies, they recognize today that they are not able to continue with uh, practices that were used in the past that were not very environmental friendly, let's say. So they have to adapt and redesign the supply chain uh, management, uh, the supply chain um, in a certain way that is more environmental friendly that is more sustainable, that doesn't allow for waste. So uh, in, in your relevant uh, example companies, so how does it work? How does, for example, Michelin address environmental issues and how are they putting into place policies that push for sustainable uh, development? Okay. So uh, thank you, Bob. Mohamed, for this transition, because the two, in between the two subjects, what you said is very key. That is to say, uh, and it is the good news of, the, of this crisis, is that everybody now realizes that a more resilient supply chain is fully aligned with a better world. That is to say, a safer planet. And this is the good news, that is to say, uh, uh, better the world will be, uh, more resilient it will be as well. So at least we don't have to choose between supply chain of performance and CO2 emission. This is a good news. Uh, so to go in this direction, we have launched several initiatives. Uh, one of them, very important, is to what we call local to local. That is to say, produce locally and sell locally. And with what I explained previously, this is a, this is a huge ch challenge for a company like Michelin, because we need to, to switch from a world where the 67 plants were dedicated to a, a small a reference a list of items to to a manufacturing footprint where we will still have about 67 plants, but with a much wider catalog of production. So that requires huge investment, huge capex, because of course, to produce other product family, you need other type of machines. Uh, so this is, a, so we have a, Investment plan for at least uh, 10 years 
to switch from the current situation to the future situation. So of course we'll have some transitions. Uh, this is the, this is the first initiative. The second one, and this initiative will come to what, as I said, a more resilient supply chain, but as well less transportation, of course, because the most ecological transportation mode is a transport that you don't do, of course. Uh, after that, we will still have to, to transport some goods. And we are working on, a, on a greener transportation modes with at least two, two interesting initiatives. Uh, we have launched a startup within Michelin called Wizamo. And the idea of this project is to, is to, is to switch uh, the maritime freight to a gasoline engine to wind. Okay, so if you go, if you if you Google Wizamo, you will see some interesting image of this prototype. This is a huge wind uh, boat to do maritime international transportation. And as well, a second initiative, a second example. Uh, we are working a lot uh, with uh, three PLs in Europe, at least as a start and as well uh, truck, uh, truck, truck OEMs to do some uh, tests and pilots on hydrogen engine trucks. And I was, uh, I was uh, last week in, uh, in Switzerland uh, because we launched this kind of initiative country by country. And really we try to, we try to, to, to to stimulate and to be part of the of, of the of the logistic ecosystem territory by territory to switch to to alternative transportation mode so we need okay, to sorry. yes yeah sorry Please. go ahead no so just just on this uh, on this co2 emission uh, stream first we need to transport less and when we transport to transport greener. Okay, so transporting less and transporting greener. And we can see clearly from also your examples that there is a big willingness from Michelin to adapt. Do you see uh, there are lots of initiatives that are taken by the company to uh, um, assure a greener supply chain and a sustainable uh, development model on the long term? And mm -hmm. uh, for you, Sasmita, how is the situation like? Can you give us an, a, a brief description of certain, for example, initiatives that are taken by Bolori Logistics? Yes, for sure. So um, I will take forward the discussion uh, by Yannick and by, uh, by, by, by Camille. So first, I would like to point out when uh, Yannick said that, okay, we are trying to do everything in house, like within the country, the development could be excellent. But then uh, if every country starts doing that, the supply chain will come to a halt. So the supply, so of course, there will be intercontinental dependence, uh, which will, uh, which will enhance the supply chain business uh, till, uh, I mean, f forever. Secondly, uh, just a comment on uh, on on, on uh, Camille's thing to transport less, transport green, and working with 3PL. Of course, this is something which is excellent, which we are also adopting. Now, we are uh, as a supply chain management company. Now, there are two factors to it. While I was talking to Yannick the other day, I was trying to explain him more on between what is the difference between logistics and what is uh, and supply chain management. So it's very important for us to understand between logistics and supply chain management. Logistics in a layman's term is transferring or transportation of a good from uh, destination A to destination B and whatever the processes are uh, involved in between with the inco terms that the logisticians may use is called logistics with the proper uh, conducive conditions of the goods that are being transferred, whether it is a pharma product, whether it is a food product, whether it is a, a manufacturing or whether it's an automotive product or whether it is a defense product. So as per the uh, environment conditions or the suitability conditions defined by the manufacturer or by the uh, user. Um, or our customers in, in plain terms. So 
when it comes to supply chain management, then there comes the involvement of the 3PL and the 4PL. So now what is, what is this? So this is along with logistics, an extended business, an extended business that, uh, that is uh, fr from the destination to, the, uh, to another destination and everything involved in between, along with warehousing, along with distribution. Now, along with warehousing and distribution, when we say these warehousing and distribution comes in particular terms. Like, uh, for example, when I'm talking about pharma products, we do, we do have pharma customers uh, or we do have uh, customers like Michelin or, uh, or, or automotive customers like uh, um, like like uh, Rolls Royce or or or, or uh, Volvo or for example, so the, when we do there, there are specifications attached to each customer. Um, yeah. For a farmer, we, we need a temperature a... control warehouse. We need a on time delivery. We need a certain temperature to be stored. If, if there is a plasma transfer, we know there is a on time transfer. If there is a medicine transfer, we know there is a on time transfer. And with the current situations, when there is a vaccine transfer uh, transfer from uh, India, for example, to other countries, for example, in Africa or USA, that they contributed in. Uh, uh, passing on or transferring the vaccines uh, in, in the past. So there are also certain conducive conditions are required. So to do this, we have to have uh, certain environmental conditions also that we need to take uh, into consideration. So to achieve the sustainable supply chain, a company must address the environmental, social, economic, and legal concerns across uh, its entire supply chain. By taking a holistic approach, this reduces the waste and environmental food footprints, while also improving on the labor conditions and health and safety, stopping worker exploitation. Now, Bolore Logistics is a uh, CS, CSR strategy, like we call, you know, uh, it is not, uh, please don't take CSR as only working for the society. We have CSR divided into two structures. One is for the sustainable development and one is for the give back to the society. So here I'm talking about the sustainable logistics program, the powering the sustainable logistics program where we have the CSR, uh, which is uh, which is chaired by the vice chair of the board of directors, which is Cyril Bolore himself. Now, uh, he is having the direct reporting and because of this and to comply to uh, certain demands, for example, if Michelin is our customer, then we have to comply to their demands of um, having green transport and less transportation. So to do that, we have taken certain certifications. So we have involved Bureau Veritas to, uh, to, to certify us into various various countries of, uh, of achieving a triple IMS certification, which, uh, which gives us uh, all standards covering occupational health and safety. For example, like ISO 45001 versus 2018, uh, quality management of 9001 versus 2015, environmental management uh, ISO 14001 versus 2015. Now, these are some uh, to name a few. Now, the supply chain connects our customers with products and services across the world. But this is coming at a cost to the environment as well. So in addition to the multiple benefits from uh, our CSR strategies that we have, which is very major under the CSR strategies, not only environment, but health, safety, ethics, compliance, everything comes into the picture. And we have to reduce the environmental impact, improve on the continuity of the supply. Uh, protect against the reputational uh, uh, damage and win more business for sure. So, um, of course, I mean, this is our core business. So we will definitely go into winning more business. So keeping the environmental factors and to also improvise on this, on the transportation part, as I said, on, sorry, on the automotive part of the Bolore that we said, we are having um, batteries. Uh, we are having battery vehicles. Battery vehicles, in the sense, we manufacture battery vehicles. I mean, in France, of course, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you are aware, but in Paris, we have the blue cars and the blue buses flying everywhere. So. Uh, so same we have in China, we have installed it uh, wherever possible, like in Shanghai, we have it in uh, USA, in some parts of USA, not everywhere though. So we are trying to even uh, reduce the uh, environmental footprints of uh, carbon emission and introduce all these, um, uh, uh, all, all these modes so that, you know, we can contribute more into the environmental sustainability. Okay, great. So those are very clear examples also from uh, uh, a perspective of a big group as Bolori Logistics. 
So we have uh, we have mentioned so international certifications, the willingness to rely on uh, uh, let's say uh, on less transportation and transportation that is more environmental friendly. Uh, there is this flexibility and adaptability uh, mentality to be um, applied by companies in order to. Uh, come up with new models, with new new initiatives. So I can see that Kami also shared one of those examples that were mentioned, one of the initiatives that were applied by Michelin. So Yannick, would you like to add something else? Any other suggestions so for companies uh, that want to guarantee sustainable development <clears throat> on the long term? Yeah. So f first of all, I, I fully agree that with SAS Meetup, when uh, we when she said uh, you cannot uh, produce uh, everything, let's say on one place or having a regional manufacturing, is part, let's say, of some solutions where we can bring for what we are mentioning with Kami about uh, the fact that having less transportation is, uh, is, is cleaner, but obviously where you cannot go back to a world where you will produce only on the, on, on, on the regional basis. I think, like everything, it has to be balanced in a certain way. We went maybe a bit too far on the globalization process, but now not the, the time to say, okay, we will produce uh, everything uh, at, uh, at home, which basically is impossible, first of all. And, uh, and secondly, which would not make uh, also uh, real, real sense if we go on the extreme way. So I, I fully agree with uh, Sasmita on this. Uh, for me, uh, with all we've been talking, maybe something to, uh, to, uh, to mention is a circular economy. So whenever, for example, Michelin or Bolloré uh, Logistics, like international company, think about a new scheme, about a new organization in their supply chain uh, management, especially Michelin on the production side, but maybe is the opportunity at this time also to think about an ecosystem and to think about a territory. Uh, whereas when you start a new plant or you will adapt your current plant, you think also in the same way that you are in a territory and you can manage, for example, the waste, you can manage the water. We talk about a lot about the, the, the water resources and the water resources is involved a lot usually in production process. And it means how to try whenever you, re you rethink your model, let's say, how to try to involve it in the ecosystem in uh, taking into consideration that the, the clean uh, production way and especially the, 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 the management of waste uh, or the management of uh, the resources. I, this is something we talk with, uh, with, uh, with Camille uh, a few times. And uh, basically, is something that uh, is key, I think, uh, today uh, when we think about international companies moving, uh, moving their, their model. And something I think we need to talk more and maybe we need to teach more uh, in, uh, in our programs, but that we'll talk it later. Yeah, so, so that takes us also to the next uh, point, to the third and final main focus of the discussion. So in order for companies to be able to address all those challenges, of course, they need to have uh, labor, they need to have uh, people that are aware of those challenges, that are prepared, that are trained, that are you know, completely uh, efficient when it comes to uh, addressing all of those uh, different challenges. So in that case, my next question to the guest would be, okay, uh, so how could that be, uh, let's say an opportunity for uh, those who are interested in the supply chain uh, management? How could that, that be an opportunity for them? Is there, does that mean, for example, that all of those crises and challenges, they will create a higher demand for people that are trained in the field, does that represent an opportunity for people who are interested in working in the supply chain sector? So how would that you know, uh, result in a, let's say, positive consequence when it comes to the recruitment of 
supply chain specialists or people who want to be you know uh, experts in the domain so from your point of view sasmita how how do you see things would that be an opportunity actually for students and uh, professionals to show more interest into supply chain well Mohammed, I would like to tell you some uh, something in elaborate. Uh, so for the supply chain management, what we view today and what we viewed in the past, this is how this question has cropped up. Now, what was viewed in the past for the uh, for this trade, which is called logistics on, and supply chain management, this was considered as a transportation business. So this was not a very uh, it was it was not a very uh, lucrative trade for which would attract more and more students uh, or more and more professionals to be in this uh, in this trade. So as a result of which we used to have some of the people those who started their careers in the nascent and then the ground level as workers as loaders as material handlers and those who had some educational background graduated themselves up in this industry to acquire great positions in future so and they are called industry experts now so but gradually growing i mean when um, when about 22 years before when i joined this trade i was also not aware and i was thinking that this is some kind of courier industry which does not transfer um, uh, documents it transfer cargoes so this was a, this was a thought which existed but over the years it is it is very clear and uh, not only me but people have started to understand that supply chain management is not only a, a study it is not not only just a business, but it has a very technical and scientific side of it. So, and more and more uh, people are getting, uh, students are getting attracted towards this side of the study and business. Why? Because uh, as it is said, you know, and this pandemic has given a, a big time eye opener manufacturing units can come to a halt when there is a pandemic when there is a crisis when there is a disruption in the economy uh, some of the industries uh, i mean i wouldn't name but then many industries can come to a halt at some point of time for some time temporarily or permanently supply chain management and logistics will continue uh, till the world exists why because there will be transportations there will be people movements there will be goods movements so whenever there will be any movements as such supply chain management and logistics will definitely uh, uh, stay so i mean starting from i mean how did logistics come into existence the logistics word originated from the armed forces from the army because they were the people, those who used this logistics as a business. They transported their arms and ammunition, their food products from, uh, from uh, places like cities to extremely, extremely uh, difficult places like uh, to the hills, to the rivers, to the seas, and wherever possible. Uh, I mean, wherever there was no possibility of humankind to exist, you will find armed forces people there. And to transfer their goods to sustain their livelihood, they have to do logistics. They have to transfer things. So from there, the logistics and supply chain management terminology originated. And then it migrated to the common people. And we started to do business with that. So and this business for, uh, for fundamental has been now carried forward to the universities, to the students, those who are explained well. And I personally go to several universities as guest faculty to explain them the future of logistics. Till the time everything exists, logistics will shine. Till the time the humankind exists, there will be movement and the supply chain management will shine. So here we need two kinds of people. They are the techni technical graduates and the management graduates. Technical graduates uh, will be very conducive and fit for the supply chain management. Because when we are talking about warehousing and management, we are not talking about material handlers and loaders. We are talking about hardcore logisticians. When we are talking about logisticians, that means they should know what should be the measurement of the soil that they're laying their floor on. They should be knowing how much height the rack should contain and how, what should be the height that should be left from the roof to have the safety systems on. So uh, we, we should know the technical, the civil technicians, the, uh, the mechanical engineers, these people should be there. Apart from that, the management graduates to carry forward the strategies of the supply chain management. So 
if you ask me the future of uh, students those they should or they should not there is a great motivation there should be a great motivation for the youngsters those who are uh, even opting to uh, take this subject as their career so for me i was talking to yanik the other day and i was telling him that we have certain uh, ylps the young leaders program where we induct people uh, induct young students as trainees and teach them freight and logistics and supply chain management and then place them into different divisions either into pharma into aid and relief into defense into aerospace into different divisions of our uh, of our uh, trade so of course there is a huge huge opportunity which lies ahead in this trade people to understand this is a ongoing trade this is a grow this is a growing trade and this will have this is having definitely a great future did i okay. answer you yeah. yanik yeah, sure. Yeah. That's very clear. So it's yeah, it's not just you know the traditional, uh, let's say, focus on transportation and that's all. The industry is of course evolving, and so there is higher demand now for people that are competent enough that, and that could anticipate and that could develop uh, sustainable business uh, models. And may I uh, add another point? Sorry for yes, this. Sure. May I add because if because I am into logistics trade, so it's very important for uh, everyone to know. Like you know, there are certain specialized products like aerospace and defense, like industrial projects and oil and gas graduates having a good background with management degrees are much needed. For a layman, it wouldn't be very important, very conducive to understand on the technicalities how to transfer goods um, in in difficult in difficult situations of oil and gas or in even industrial uh, projects uh, or aerospace and defense. When we when we transfer the satellites, when we transfer the defense helicopters or the defense crafts or the submarines, so we we should have uh, people with good knowledge to come and join this. So of course we have a good opportunity. As a career, that's great. So that's one of the positive, let's say, perspectives uh, for the students and you know the professionals that are interested in uh, this field. And uh, for you, Kami, how do you see? How do you perceive the impact on the labor market based on this discussion? Uh, so I fully agree with uh, with Sasmita. Uh, there, there is a huge field of of opportunities for uh, for young students. Uh, to participate to this uh, shift to a more sustainable world. Um, what I would say is that important to, to, to know, uh, because of this context, the profile of people who are going to look at is not exactly the same. Of course, we still need people, uh, I would say, with strong skills on supply chain and logistics, what I call hard skills. But more and more, we are looking for people with the right soft, soft skills as well. Uh, why? Because supply chain has always been quite a transversal function in a, in a company. You speak with manufacturing, you speak with finance, you speak with uh, sell, sales forces. So you need to be uh, an expert of your uh, supply chain logistic uh, world, but you need able to be able to speak with other functions. It has always been the, the, the case. On the top of that now, and we touch it with, uh, with the previous uh, speech of Yannick, with uh, the next step of circular economy, the supply chain will be, I would say, reconstruct, redesigned at the territory level. So a supply chain uh, leader in Michelin uh, we'll have to speak with other companies uh, with we could build a circular economy in a given territory. We'll have to speak with the representative of the society. We'll have to speak uh, more than we do today with the supply chain uh, manager of the suppliers and the customers. So we are now in a, so the, the, we are now speaking about a supply chain ecosystem. Sometimes we speak with some competitors because to save, to have a greener logistic, we could sometimes mutualize some warehouses or transportation mode with some competitors. A few years ago, it was not, it was forbidden to speak with competitors. 
now we are we are we do the promotion of trying to to do some some optimization on, on to, to build a greener uh, greener world uh, mutualizing the needs including with the competitors so you see the 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 balance between hard skills and soft skills is not exactly the same and uh, and it gives a field of opportunities to the people with the right skills but both uh, both hard and soft uh, because at the end of the day a more sub a more resilient supply chain a more a more sustainable supply chain is about participate to a better world so 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 i'm speaking to the young people here in this in this room if you want to participate to a better world come in supply chain You are, you are mute, Thank you very much, Kami. Uh, so uh, I propose now for the uh, participants to prepare their questions. If you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, ask them in the uh, chat box, and we are going to be able to address them. Uh, thanks, Harman, for your lovely comments. Um, while you prepare your questions, also, I would like to see if you would like to add something related to uh this part of the discussion yeah yeah okay uh yeah in a few words yeah first of all i think uh, opportunities like we mentioned in supply chain great opportunities and like uh, camille mentioned to uh, to build a new world but also in in the skills that uh, that uh, probably we ask to to people who get involved today in the supply chain management uh, the profile has to adapt also to new situation. Basically, what today is not on the like, purchasing price and uh, purchasing and logistics, let's say, what to uh, activity, sorry, to uh, to be in the negotiation of conditions, which uh, was one of the basic aspects in the in the past about uh, supply chain management. But today is how I can get my products, how I can get my raw materials, how I can get uh, the resources. So basically, it was a sourcing aspect is becoming uh, as important as the purchasing aspect. Because today the question is how I can get uh, my product, how I can be sure where to get a product, and not really where the condition in which I'm going to get in price. And the second thing is uh, probably on the deadline side, huh? and in which time, what is the lead time for uh, the product that I have identified uh, to uh, to get it, which uh, which mean, and I fully agree that with uh, with Camille, uh, development in uh, in uh, soft skill that is uh, basically uh, necessary for that, and uh, not only <laughs> as uh, I've been the the the. I had testimonies in this in the retail industry where we were sometimes on basic uh, negotiations with uh, with suppliers uh, in the in the supply chain process. So that's the first aspect, and uh, basically people also like the, we mentioned for soft skill having flexibility and being able to adapt. And, and the third thing I would mention is on on, on a mid term basis. Is, uh, I think through the supply chain uh, management, today will give you access to uh, probably CEO uh, position in the company. Uh, we knew that before CEO at the beginning were coming from uh, the, the financial part uh, usually. Some then came from the marketing and sales part, but today I think, okay, on the supply chain uh, uh, basis, but there are great opportunities because you are involved, like we mentioned, in the whole process of the company uh, to have access quite to, uh, to CEO positions in the future, which make the things, let's say, even, uh, even more exciting for, for, for students to involve in this area. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so now we are ready to take um, in the questions of the students. Uh, we need to provide really brief answers because you see we uh, we are uh, um, we don't have let's say much time available to end the session. Um, so yeah, let us take the first question. So 
from Hunaina, which I would like to thank for her question. So with the technical advancements in supply chain, so blockchain, AI, artificial intelligence, robots in warehouses, will there be a reduction in labor in the coming future? What do you think about that, Sasmita? Because you were the main person that talked about this interest yes. of investing, you know, in IT. So how, yeah. how would that, how would that, you know, how would you reassure the students in that case? I would say that no, I mean, it is not that uh, we can think about autonomous operations in terms of lights out, hands free and self driving, where organizations use AI technologies across end to end supply chain to make uh, predictive and prescriptive decisions. So ex an example is responding to a change in customer demand seen instantly by entire value chain, for example, the organizations, uh, its suppliers and the suppliers suppliers, so they can collectively adjust supply plan and production um schedules immediately ultimately the digital and the autonomous technologies will help make people's jobs easier and the supply chain more efficient and optimized it's not going to reduce manpower okay so that's quite let's say reassuring uh, for our followers okay moving on to the second question that i would like to address to kami uh, so since the logistic cost has broken all the record and we can see that it's getting higher and higher, which is the immediate, uh, let's say, uh, trigger point for the inflation. So um, how do you see the, these those increasing freight costs and uh, how what, what is the extent uh, of that? Is it going to continue to increase? Is it going to become stable? How do you see... Um, the future of the logistic logistics cost can our current uh, forecast on this uh, on those logistic costs is that yes they are going to to stay high probably several years because we have a huge backlog i would say of goods to to transport and because and this is where we see the trade-off of the supply chain because of co2 emission the the transportation mode are reducing the speed the 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 intercontinental boats in the in the different oceans they are they are going uh, at lower speeds than before to reduce the co2 emission so it takes more time it takes it takes more capacity of transportation so for what what we can foresee today the cost is uh, will become high in the following years Okay, excellent. Um, I can see that there is another question. I'm not sure whether I understood it. Uh, so Santosh, if I don't know if you have the chance to uh, actually activate your mic to ask it to the guests directly. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you well, yeah. Please okay, thank you. Uh, thank you Forum for giving me opportunity to ask my question. Uh, the question is uh, regarding the recent, uh, I mean, it is almost uh, two years uh, we are facing the shortages of semiconductor parts, uh, particularly IC. And uh, I want to know if Forum uh, have any other strategy to deal with. So any, if there are any strategies, let's say, to optimize uh, the, um, the handling, the... Um, I mean, the delivery of certain raw materials that are very scarce, such as, for example, semiconductors, because with my really little knowledge of uh, uh, supply chain, I think it's mainly uh, produced in China and Taiwan, yeah, Taiwan I guess. Yeah, Taiwan I in think um, so if I, I may... don't know if any of my guests can add something. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, sorry, Mohammed. I think for the semiconductors, I don't know what parts uh, the, many parts would conduct for a uh, would, would conduct for the consolation of a semiconductor. I don't know what part you are talking because some of the parts that are if it is uh, you are right in saying that if it is related to the manufacturing in China, we are facing a huge problem there. So it, the, that is the Chinese nations have uh, have uh, been on a on a kind of a shutdown or on the business and supply chain. Uh, it is not very aggressive as it was in the past. 
so of course the chinese sector has been affected in terms of imports and exports both to the extent that we have found a difficulty in in finding containers uh, to send and to get from and to china so there has been if it is involving this sector of course there will be a huge disruption for the past few months uh, also it might be for a few months but then if it is sourced through any other your any other country any other nation that may be uh, involved in the, into the manufacturing of the of the raw materials uh, for the consolation of the semiconductors i think supply chain companies uh, like us or any other can definitely help uh thank you susmita but uh, this is not uh, i am sorry but uh, i am my question is not uh, answered thing is that uh, it is not uh, uh, the, the uh, part which i'm uh, say saying it is not uh, from china actually they are produced in taiwan they are produced in usa and uh, us come us based company are getting those parts at very cheap rates uh, and in other in other words say in india for the same part i have to pay almost five six to seven times the cost So I think this that is a man-made the... problem. <laughs> problem made. No, uh... no, no. This is this is a procurement issue, uh, Santosh. If I may say, this is a procurement issue on the on the uh, deficit of the containers that's existing currently. I can understand what. you are talking this is the same condition which is prevalent with all the supply chain management companies in india specifically because there's been a shortage of containers and a huge shortage which is going on and people are managing business to the extent that they can if they don't have enough contacts so there there i don't know which company you are working with uh, which is uh, having a great uh, rate boost no, i am i am working with i'm also working with adore power and the parts which i'm getting is not from the container actually they are they are usually uh, transported by the air um, but uh, it is not due to sub say issue of supply chain it is a problem at uh, uh, no, manufacturer I end and i said procurement i said not uh, supply chain <laughs> okay so think is that it is manufacturer end problem and it is man made problem for the say uh, benefit for uh, money making and uh, we are in as if I, I, my i and my company are paying a huge cost for uh, this man made concern so this is my concern is, uh, <laughs> presently what i am doing i am this I'm is a economical the, uh, concern santosh okay hey. thanks hey. Thanks, hey. thanks thanks thank you very much just for sorry, uh, uh, yeah. sorry yes, just yes. Uh, santosh maybe uh, maybe one thing uh, regarding this and yeah and like uh, like we mentioned semiconductors uh, basically were coming from uh, taiwan and uh, and from china some also other parts of the world so maybe there's uh, yeah like on a geopolitical uh, thinking uh, yeah. about uh, how to redistribute a bit like we were mentioning uh, at the beginning uh, the situation and the manufacturing in semiconductors we have the example in europe today where some governments are trying to re-promote and relocalize uh, some uh, semiconductors uh, facilities one thing also that can be a clever thing you know you uh, humans try uh, to be as much as possible clever whenever they face a tough situation in fact uh, and maybe Camille <laughs> can uh, can give a word uh, about this is not something we uh, we talk uh, earlier with Camille but in some uh, big uh, production company like uh, like yeah. Michelin like uh, uh, Merlin Gerin like uh, okay uh, many uh, international french uh, companies they have stock today of semiconductors because uh, for whatever reason because they've been buying at one point of time and this stock uh, uh, lay let's say in the in the warehouses uh, because uh, they they've not been used or for whatever reason and and one of the idea cause we've been developing here in uh, in in Clermont on 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 one project i'm i'm working on with uh, the guy uh, specialized in the I, iot business and iot platform Uh, in fact mm -hmm. it would be to try to to identify the, the stock of semiconductors that we can have in a big companies where today uh, all over france or all over europe and try to mm -hmm. do like a 
kind of stock market, let's say, a stock exchange of uh, semiconductors, quite like uh, saying to Michelin, for example, okay, you've been uh, identifying that you have uh, this kind of stocks in uh, all your warehouses. Like, can you put it uh, let, on the table? Maybe uh, oh. he, he has a use for, 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 for another company. And how we can, let's say, share all this information and uh, and, uh, and and find uh, some way to uh, to, uh, to avoid the, the, the shortage for for some company, and this can build, let's say, company working together and trying mm -hmm. to have uh, like kind of global or common purchase on semiconductors, and in a certain way maybe being able. Well, to put pressure, I will talk like I was talking in the retail sometime, but to put pressure on maybe some government or some uh, some uh, government companies uh, with volumes and uh, also uh, getting uh, better conditions uh, for, mm -hmm. the, for the procurement of these semiconductors. I don't know if you answer to your question, but basically the kind of thing uh, we <laughs> No, I understand. I understood the concern. Uh, uh, I'm right now uh, going on hunting and gathering strategy where I am hunting this product worldwide where it's available and gathering it. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, to uh, give me opportunity to ask my question and to express myself. Uh, thank Thanks. you, three of you. Thank, okay, thank, thank you very much, Santosh. So uh, I, I really um, propose that we go ahead yes, with... Sure. Uh, now, uh, the last part of the discussion, because we're kind of running out of time. So you see uh, us uh, both working for ESC Clermo Business School. Uh, in the business school, so the spirit is actually the following. We are engaged to prepare managers who are flexible, who are agile, who are leaders, and who are able to address all of those difficulties that we have talked about during this discussion. So. Uh, as part of the course offer of ESC Clermo, so we have a specialized master's, a master of science program that is focusing on logistics, purchasing, procurement, and supply chain, uh, where Yannick is the head of uh, this program. So I would like to ask you, Yannick, to provide uh, briefly certain insights and a quick brief yeah. introduction into this program. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, basically, what's uh, different differentiates our program to some other program is uh, first of all, we, we want to develop an international vision of the business of the supply chain, uh, obviously, because that's why uh, the, the program is in uh, English, because we think on our side that talking about supply chain is talking about uh, international, uh, uh, let's say, uh, solution, and especially like uh, Sasmita uh, mentioned uh, earlier. So that's why even being in Clermont-Ferrand, which is probably not well known from uh, all the, the, the Indian uh, people, except uh, perhaps because of the headquarters of, uh, of Michelin, but we uh, want uh, to, uh, to give uh, to this uh, training an international uh, vision and an, an international uh, dimension. So this one is the first point. The second point is uh, we want to be connected with the real world. Okay, so we have the theory um, and we have, uh, you will receive uh, all the basics, uh, let's say about uh, the techniques and uh, about uh, the, the supply chain, uh, I would say techniques um, that, uh, and, and learning staff, uh, like the APIX certification, for example, that we propose and that is uh, important whenever you want to be graduated and you want to develop yourself in a supply chain, uh, something uh, important but to, uh, to understand and, uh, and uh, obviously quite to, to develop and is uh, worldwide recognized. But the main thing on our side, we want to uh, develop our program with professionals. So that's why today we are with uh, Camille and we are with uh, Sas Sasmita, with Sasmita and, uh, and, uh, and with Camille. Uh, because <clears throat> it's, uh, it's important uh, to us on the academic side uh, to be linked uh, with uh, the economic, uh, economical world and with the professional. So uh, I would say that uh, 
90% of the people uh, involved in the program are professionals who, who had uh, experience already uh, in the field and who can teach uh, in a very uh, pragmatic uh, way uh, in our program. Of course, we have also some uh, res researcher uh, teacher, uh, but the main uh, the main flow, well, let's say, is with uh, teacher who are involved in the in in the real world. So, yeah. so, so that's basically the two main things that can differentiate ourselves from a, from a, another program. So yeah, we're very close, as Yannick mentioned, to the company world, to the corporate world, and that is why we are working closely with our network of partner companies. Uh, and of course, so we have this partnership with Michelin, uh, as you may uh, know. So the headquarters of uh, the giant company is based in our city, in the city of Clermont-Ferrand. And we are really proud to have this partnership with Michelin, the number one company that welcomes uh, our, our students and uh, graduates for internships, apprent uh, apprentice uh, opportunities. Uh, so that takes us to the um, next question to Camille. So how is Michelin involved in this partnership uh, uh, when it comes to this program in particular? So uh, as you said, we are, uh, we are, we are neighbors. Uh, when I see to meet uh, Yannick in the ESC school, I go by foot from my office to this school. So, so of course, it uh, creates intimacy between our, our two organizations. It's very important for us. We, are, we have been uh, uh, speaking in the last uh, one hour and a half about sustainable world, sustainability. Uh, of course, uh, the society is very important. And, and uh, the vision of, uh, of Michelin is that a company, an industrial company, is part of the society and the, the, sustainability, the sustainability of the society is very important. So we have, uh, we have in our strategy uh, three, three pillars. Profit, of course, because we are, uh, we are a company. Planet and people. And the fact to participate to the education of young people, so to the education of the people who are going to build the future of the planet is for us part of our mission. So it's not optional, it's really part of the mission of the company to participate to the growth of the society, the growth of education. And when I uh, give part of my time to do that, when I uh, participate to that, I really do my job supply chain manager. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Kami. And to conclude, Sasmita, what, in your opinion, what would be the interest of the students, you know, to integrate a master's program that focuses, you know, on uh, um, supply chain and uh, those uh, preparation points to become, you know, an expert in the field to be able to address all of those challenges efficiently? What is the interest for the students in, in your point of view? Well, uh, for a student, the most uh, interesting part to be a, a supply chain uh, professional would be that they can develop their career in the logistics division into various aspects. I mean, okay, if I talk of an engineer who is doing an aerospace uh, engineering, they will only study into the aerospace engineering part. But then if if uh, we pursue of a, we, we ask a a management student to take up a specialized course in the aerospace division of the supply chain management they will not only do uh, they will not only deal with them yes they are not going to do the researches on the space science but then they are going to deal with rest of the products and also to uh, specialize themselves into the in, into the transportation part of the uh, that is to deal on the supply chain management uh, technicalities secondly the growth prospect in this company in the in this field is quite immense so for example there is um, i mean there is no limits to growth and there is no timeline for growth for for a youngster uh, who have who have been put on a ylp or a young leaders program if the if the if the individual starts performing in no time the person can reach 
uh, a, a good position in his career. So what matters, and when you reach a good position, what matters to a person is also to earn. I mean, no, no one works for charity. So uh, so the, the, the money, of course, follows. So there is great, uh, the, the, there is great uh, uh, salaries. Uh, there is good positions. There is good, uh, there is good prospects in the life. There is a diversified career that in in the uh, keeping the transportation and logistics in the base like uh, taking in, it into the base you can switch over from divisions to divisions you can uh, go into the different divisions and different products which are considered as niche of the supply chain management you can start from projects you can go to aerospace you can go to defense you can go to the healthcare you can go to aid and relief you can be product uh, like root and product exports or you can be special product exports of air or air freight or sea freight or custom clearance uh, so you you have various uh, various roles that can fit you in if you are well acquainted and well versed with the basic knowledge of of of, of a transport uh, of a, a freight forwarding which is logistics so the career growth is immense the and followed by the career growth, the monetary growth is huge. Along with it, the job satisfaction um, is various, is varied. Like you can switch over from one one uh, one aspect to another to suit your uh, to suit to suit your career growth uh, during your career uh, path of your job role job life. Brilliant, excellent. Yeah, I don't don't know if you wanna add something, Jenny. Uh, one thing I forgot, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but about uh, our program is we will teach you how to be uh, flexible, how to be uh, agile, what we've been talking about, a resilient supply chain. Okay, so this is a focus also that we have put in our program. And the last point, uh, come with us in uh, Clermont-Ferrand because it's a great place uh, to, to live. It's not well known, so maybe that's why it's, uh, it's uh, still great with a great uh, environment and uh, your colleagues, some colleagues uh, of you from, uh, from India, uh, really uh, enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you very much. One last question Thank before you very we much, end the course. discussion. Uh, from Harman who's asking, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, you can uh, activate your mic. Yeah. Harman, sorry, I saw that you have been raising your hand for quite a while now. So you can, yeah, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Mohammed. Well, thank you so much, panelists, for this information informative session. Uh, sorry, Harman, can you can so you raise I, your voice a bit because we can't hear you very well. Uh, hello, I'm audible. Yeah, now I can hear you well. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, panelists, for this informative session. Um, I. Actually, I was looking at the ESC program for. I'm living in France, and. Uh, I want to pursue supply chain, and I saw that it is only available for Bach plus Catra. So I am Bach plus Troa. So I only have a license, which makes me ineligible for the program. Yeah. So you see, Herman. In fact, uh, yeah. so maybe the it's, it's really a condition that is uh, throw some light. How? Yeah. So maybe uh, you can you know give me some guidance on how I could pursue my career in supply chain in France. Uh, so yeah. Uh, given yeah. my background, so maybe Herman... need applying, be it applying for Al Alternos in Michelin or the Young Leaders Program in uh, in Shashmita's firm. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I I got your point. Thanks, Harman. So basically, yeah, uh, since our uh, program is accredited by what we call the CGE, the Conference de Grande École, so we have certain criteria that we need to respect. As as Smita talked about that before, you see as being a multinational groups, being sorry, a multinational group, they have certain criteria they need to respect when it comes to their industry. It's the same for our school. We are accredited, so we have certain, you know, evaluation uh, grills that we have to adhere to. So one of those is that for the Master of Science programs, only people who have finished a four-year undergraduate degree are eligible. So what would be uh, the opportunity for you in case you have done a Bachelor of Commerce or a Bachelor that is of three years? In India, you can integrate the master in management program for two years, and then you choose the supply chain specialization, which is available in year two. 
And then in year two, it remains possible to seek an apprenticeship and to work and study at the same time and to have the company that sponsors your tuition in year two. So that is definitely a possibility. It means that you would just need to do an extra academic semester compared to the MSc uh, students. So we would definitely be able to welcome you, but rather for two years in the master's in management program with a focus in supply chain in year two, and also you're able to obtain a double degree in the Master of Science in Purchasing and Supply Chain Management in year two. So anyway, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me. You have uh, my contact details on the brochure of the program with the WhatsApp number, everything else that you might need, and we can schedule you know, an individual session to really see how to fit your profile into one of our different programs. So we are right yes, on time. Be perfect. We, we were thinking that it's going to be a long, an hour and a half, but I think we could still talk, you know, for further time. It's very interesting. I didn't see the time passing by with my lovely guests. So thank you so much to the Chamber of Commerce uh, France India for the organization of this wonderful session. Thank you so much, Sapna, and your team for all the efforts to communicate about the event. Thank you so much to all the participants to your um, um, to your um, attention, to your uh, eagerness to know more, to your questions. It's really a pleasure to engage with such a dynamic public. And uh, we, we, we remind you that also you could still get in touch with us through the different uh, channels, so LinkedIn, uh, social media, uh, email, WhatsApp, and so on and so forth. So I would like to particularly thank also my guests, Yanni, Kami, and Sasmita for all the wonderful insights that you have shared with the students and with our audience today. And, uh, and that's it. So thank you once again. And we are really looking forward to meeting you uh, here in France or in India once again uh, very soon in the future. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions also, you have uh, the contact details that are mentioned of the Chamber of Commerce on the screen. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful day and talk to you very soon. Thank you so much, Mohammed, And thank you to everyone. And I'd like to ask Bhakti just to do a few lines of closing uh, from the chamber side. So yes, we'll just end it with a few lines from Bhakti. Yeah, Bhakti, over to you for the vote of thanks. Uh, we would like to thank our speakers for sharing such valuable insights on various aspects about supply chain management, also in the context of the global pandemic and also how the supply chain sector survived and thrived during this pandemic. We would also like to thank all our attendees and participants for their engaging participation. In case anybody has any more questions about the programs at ESC Claremont, you can email us at employment.service at ifk.org.in. It's mentioned on the screen. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank so you, much, everybody. Everybody. Thank you, Thank everyone. you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too.